consolidation party celebrating Jacksonville's anniversary of consolidation on October 1st, 1968, when we were the new Bold City of the South. So the tour is going to be more of a 1968 theme tour. Now, like I said, about every half hour or so, I'll be doing a trivia question. And if you get it right, you get a free Azar sausage. Because they're going to be cooking the sausage this afternoon. So I know when we finish, you know, people are going to want to get another beer and get something to eat. So they should be out here cooking all the sausages and all that. And I'll do some trivia. Then uh, we'll give out a few free ones. We'll be back here at 6 o'clock when we okay. jumpstart our consolidation party here. Yes, yes. So we're going to be walking down Bay Street here. Um, and uh, we're going to be going through quite a few traffic lights. So um, we got to do our best to stay together. right? Because once the lights turn, we all got to get across. Once we get too spread out, you know, it'll be chaos. Okay. But uh, the more we can do, the more buildings we can get into. And I'm hoping we can go quick enough that we'll get into our downtown library, because then that'll be a bathroom break. Okay? Sweet. Okay, sweet. There you go. Sweet. There you go. <laughs> okay, follow me on out this way. This sculpture right here. So I got to take you back, since it's a 1968 theme. I gotta take you back to 1968. Can you hear me okay, everyone? Yes. Is that fine? Okay. So what was here in 1968? Do you think the building across the street was here in 1968? Yes. Yeah, that was here, for sure. The building across the street, that was Henry John Clutho's first building. And he came here after the Great Fire of 1901. So he was the architect on that, the Dial Up Church building. But right here, where the old Independent Life Modus Wells Fargo building was, this is where the McConaughey building was. Four stories high. On the south side of the building, there was a big sign onto the facade of it called the Drew Company. Anyone remember that? Anyone old enough to remember that with the Drew Company? But uh, Drew made, there was a printing shop, and my old postcards that I have, like from St. Augustine, all have Drew printing on them. So they did postcards around here, too. So, when this building was going to be built in 1974, the new Independent Life Building, it was a big deal in Jacksonville, and they tore down the McConaughey Building. But they saved pieces of the McConaughey building. And that's why you have an M here. So this is actually two pieces put together that were on the facade of the McConaughey building. That was here prior. So at that point in time, I need to mention the Navy. That was here in 1968. Did a nice flyby for us. So McConaughey building is right here. If you looked out over here, this would have been a big parking lot in 1968. Both sides of the uh, uh, Main Street Bridge were a parking lot. It was way before Jacksonville Landing. That didn't come until the 1980s. So someone actually asked me, they said, Gary, I thought you were going to dress like General Andrew Jackson. <laughs> you know, well, that's my regular top to bottom tour. Uh, today, this is a 1968 theme. So I got my 1968 shirt here. This is what Bill Walton wore in 1968. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he was a big tie-dye guy, big basketball guy. So. Uh, what you would have seen if you looked out here in 1968, you would have looked across and saw a Friendship Fountain. And Friendship Fountain looked very different back then. It shot, there was three big pumps, and they shot the water a hundred feet into the air. It was actually the world's tallest fountain. Shooting water a hundred feet into the air. People came from all over to see that fountain. Well, yep. So that was directly across of what you would have saw. Now, over where the Times Union Performing Arts Center was, that's where the Civic Auditorium was, the new Civic Auditorium. And oh, that was a big deal when that was built. So all these things, a lot of these things have changed or been torn down since the 1960s. Let's keep walking. 100 feet, that's right. <laughs> 
Now to the right of Friendship Fountain is where the old lobster house was. <laughs> and what movie was filmed with a famous scene in the lobster house? Creature of the Black Lagoon. Very good. And technically, it was Creature of the Black Lagoon and then Revenge of Creature of the Black Lagoon. Very good. Very good. There you go. Awesome. So, my first trivia question is going to be who starred in the Creature of the Black Lagoon who's unlisted, uncredited? The old man? I'll wait till we get into the bar. But uh, the old lobster house was right in there. That's where the lobster house was, just to the right there. And that was filmed there. And the, the uh, really neat scene was when the creature of the Black Lagoon comes out of the river. And he goes into the, the lobster house restaurant and he grabs a girl from the restaurant and then goes back into the water. That was filmed right there. Was it the charter house? On the other side of the bridge? Charter uh, the charter house is over on the other yeah, side. Yeah, was it the thing with the charter house? It's a lobster. Uh, no, lobster house is definitely over here. Okay. <laughs> now, uh, another thing that ran along here, basically, at one time in the early 1900s, there was a railroad that ran along here. And uh, McConaughey Building was here, the railroad had ran along here. And one of those locomotive engines from that railroad fell over into the mud in 1901. And just sunk and sunk and sunk and sunk. And it's still down there today. So when they built this building, the Wells Fargo building, uh, originally Independent Life, they actually had to move it 15 feet to the north because the, re the locomotive engine was in the way. <laughs> but it's still down there today. So that's one of those secrets of Jacksonville. <laughs> now there was another secret in Jacksonville that some people had heard about and they hadn't quite found yet come 1968 and it was in the river. Because during our Civil War there was a ship called the Maple Leaf which was a Union supply ship. And the South mined the river, and the maple leaf got a big hole blowing into it, and went straight down into the mud. And there it sat down there, until the 1980s when some divers found it, started pulling it up. The nation's largest collection of Civil War artifacts, our whole nation's largest collection of Civil, Civil War artifacts, are in Jacksonville, down in the river, still there. Because they only pulled up pieces of it. It's still down there. This way. The building across the way here. Oh. So back in 1968, way before the Bank of America Tower was built, and that was originally built as the Barnett Center in 1990, the building that was there was the Herd Bank. And the herd bank had these really big, massive columns in front. Greek columns, looted and all. Uh, when that building got torn down, they saved those columns. Those are the columns that are out front of the Times Union Performing Arts Center and the ones inside the lobby. They got four of them in there. They came from the bank that was torn down there, the herd bank. Now, uh, 1968, there was a company that built their new headquarter building. This one right here. This was the new SWD building. Anyone know what SWD stands for? Stockton, Stockton Watley, Watley and Davin. Very good. Stockton, Watley, and Davin. I knew somebody would know that. One of the largest real estate mortgage companies in the whole southeast was here. Stockton, Watley, and Davin. They started out as the Telfair Stockton Company, and two young guys, Joe Davin and Brown Watley, worked for them. And later on, they started their company, then they all merged together. But uh, known for a lot of things, Telfair Stockton Company is. Um, they had done the development of uh, Avondale, the development of San Marco, the development of Ponte Vedra Beach, and all that. After a while, they ran. Uh, the Ponte Vedra Inn and Club out there. But uh, SWD was a really big company. 
and um, uh, Telfair Stockton, I'll tell you another one of the secrets of Jacksonville. So Telfair Stockton and his brothers um, had come here with their mother after the Civil War. We're here in Jacksonville. Uh, their mother ran a boarding house called the Priory, the fanciest boarding house in town. All of her sons basically worked as clerks and doing different things. Well, uh, some of her sons, Telfair Stockton, uh, James Noble uh, Stockton, these guys become very famous doing developments and all that. There was one black sheep of the family named Guy Stockton. Nobody knows that much about Guy Stockton. But he got a servant pregnant at the Priory. So the family did not admit that it was a relative, but they all knew it. The baby ended up being put up for adoption, got it adopted. Uh, that lady turned out to be Eartha White, one of the biggest philanthropists here in Jacksonville, started the Clara White mission and all. But uh, her father was Guy Stockton from the Stockton family. So this was the new headquarter buildings for Stockton, Watley, and Davin, and the executives took up the whole top floor up there, kept that nice view up there to themselves. Today there's a restaurant up there, a strange machine. The tunnel, so you still got another minute before to you know, finish your beers. Uh, my buddy Will will collect up the cups, because uh, security will be watching us. We're on. Uh, they're watching us on cameras and all that stuff in there. So, uh, 1968, across the street over here was the big Sears store. People wonder where the Sears was. It was the Cadillac of the Sears stores. That was a big deal. And uh, one of the biggest Sears in the whole United States. Now I'm going to point something out to you that if you look one block to the north, notice the elevation is higher up there. It's in that city block to the north where the banks settled in the early 1900s. There's a hill in downtown Jacksonville up there. There is a hill. So what the banks did was they settled on that hill because they knew that you can dig one story down underground and not hit water. Because anywhere else in Florida, as you know, we all live here, we don't have basements. You dig down, you hit water. But there's a hill. So that's where the three largest banks in all of Jacksonville settled. And we're going to be going through some tunnels now, and then we're going to be going into the old bank vault there. Okay? So we're going to walk one block to the north, going underneath Forsyth Street. We're going to make a turn. We're going to go underneath Hogan Street here. And we're heading over to the old Atlantic National Bank building that was built in 1909. Okay? So, uh, going in, and we can't bring beers. Uh, Will's going to collect the cups and throw them out. Of course. Actually going underneath right now, we're going underneath Forsyth Street. Forsyth. So we're walking straight into that hill. This way. Before we get into the musty <laughs> So now we just made a turn. We're heading now to the east, and we're going underneath Hogan Street. Feels so good in here. Although it might start fogging up my camera. Just slow down. Give me a second. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Elevators. This is my. Yeah, that's an old, old scale. This is one of my favorite spots in, in the building right here. Look at that. Look, that's fancy. That's fancy as shit. This way. Wait till. There's one. There's one of them, guys, right there. Stuff underground. It doesn't make sense. Well, if you notice how it. Alright, do we have any emergency bathroom break? Anybody emergency bathroom break? 
These are probably my favorite spots. <laughs> So I can touch the ceiling, guys. <laughs> so this is one tunnel. This is one tunnel. Well, technically a tunnel. We're inside. So we're actually underneath Forsyth Street right now. Got it. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, just wait. It gets better. Trash can right over here. It gets better. Trash cans. Trash cans right over here on the left. And then this is uh, this is part. <laughs> yeah. Right. Come on in. And there's the other one. <laughs> As you notice, as they go down the slope. I'm not confused. I know exactly where I am. That's Adams. This is Adams. If you listen real close, you can hear. My elevation is wrong. We made a turn, and we're actually going underneath right now. Hogan. Hogan. That's right. And then Adams. Just you wait. Yeah. Now that's cool. Oh, okay, I'm going there. Dude, this is two persons thick. Good God. I like the cranks and the gears. That's a thick hole. Good God. And there's, there's. Oh. What is that? What is that? This is some very There's one over here. Oh, it's blocked off. Oh, they blocked it off. So, what rooms have the indoor vaults? All this stuff. All of it has a flashlight. I'm gonna follow the person with the flashlight. Oh, wow. Oh, shit. Oh, that's why they blocked the other one off. I can barely see anything. This place. So we're right in the middle where all the tunnels are. So Florida National Bank over here, two big underground vaults over there. So what happens is in the mid 1950s, the culture changes in the United States. And the new trend is to have the drive through. Have the drive through. So, McDonald's hamburgers, right? Pull up with your car, order your food. That was new in the 1950s. Well, the banks, to stay up with the trends as well, the banks needed drive throughs Right now, stay in your car and do business. Well, the old bank that was here, built in the late 1800s, the old Barnett Bank, they didn't have a drive through So what are you gonna do? Well, let's use the underground. So That's right here is where the Jack in the Box teller popped up from the underground. People would pull up do their banking, and then it would go back underground. So each day it would go up and down. These are pictures of the Jack in the Box teller. That's wild. It would go up and down. Up and down each day. The guy in the Day. It would stay up for the day. Okay, okay, that's what I was like thinking when I'm in there. It would stay up for the day. At the end of the day, it goes back on the ground because they had to fill it with money again. So it's like a bank. It's a small bank. Yep, and then it would pop up. So it's right here on this corner. I can barely do that. <laughs> Two big underground balls. The other bank is to the right of this one. That we just came from. Yeah. Okay. Yep, yep. So, I wonder what the Florida National wow. Bank did. What did they do over there? Because that's an early 1900 bank. You know, how did they do the drive through? Well, turns out 
when I was underneath that building, you can walk 30 feet to the edge of the road, almost to the edge of the bank building, the edge of the road. And I called it the tunnel to nowhere because there was nothing there at the end. But then I found this brochure. So that was their brochure. So they were very proud of that. What is, what is she looking at in there? A periscope. No, that is a, that's the teller station there, but she's looking at that. She see, they can see each other. Ah, uh, okay. She's underground. Gotcha. Yep. She's underground. <laughs> I don't know how they pass things, but she's looking through the college. So when they had the Jack in the Box teller going up and down here, they did that for six years. And after six years, right here on the corner. After that, we're going to build a new building. In this building, we're going to design it around having a drive through. So look at how wide the bays are because you can drive in one side, drive out the other. So they had multiple drive-throughs here with this building. So this was designed to have multiple drive-throughs in 1961. The eighth theme, because where the city hall building is today, on the north side of James Weldon Johnson Park, back in 1968, this was Hemming Park. And that was the May Cohen's department store. Started out as being the Cohen Brothers, later on became May Cohen's. And that was the big flagship uh, shopping area in downtown. So people came downtown to go shopping. Uh, all that changed with Regency Mall and the opening up of the Matthews Bridge. But all of the shopping was all downtown. Um, across the way here with the federal building is just on the west side of the park. That is where the Robert Meyer Hotel was. And that is where the birthplace of consolidation was. Because it was a guy named Claude Yates. And Claude Yates basically wrote a manifesto. And he asked city leaders to get together and had them all sign basically a document committing themselves to consolidation consolidating the city and the county it all started with the yates manifesto over there at the robert meyer hotel okay we're going in the library we're going to do is we're going to go up to the fourth floor of the library okay so with such a big group we got to take multiple elevators Okay. The cleaner restrooms are on the fourth floor. Um, if you want to use the ones downstairs, you're on your own. I always suggest to use the ones upstairs in the fourth floor. Okay. So we'll have to take multiple elevator routes up to the fourth floor. This is about the Great Fire of 1901. Anybody wonder what St. Augustine looked like in 1958? There's a video right oh, here playing. Funny of St. Augustine in 1958. Now the reason why they're playing a video here is to demonstrate that up here, Boom. in this memory lab that's part of Special Collections, they got a grant to basically help anyone from Jacksonville. Can yeah, they'll have to be there. Which is easy to do. <laughs> And even if you're not in the Bold City, no, Bold City. <laughs> you're sitting in Bold City, you'd be burnt. <laughs> I believe that's the church. That's the one we're doing. We just here in the La Villa area and spreads to the east. And literally just stopped at one point by the in time, the wind changed direction and blew to the south. And a little placard at the end of Market Street says Market Street Horror because people got trapped there. And the hero of the fire was Arthur Cummer, Cummer Museum. Arthur Cummer had his yacht down there and made three trips and saved people from that dock from the Market Street Pier down there. And remember where I pointed out where the Sears was? Well, within the Sears, there was a dining area inside the Sears. And the most, uh, the fanciest dining area was the Rebo Room. And what was in the Rebo Room? was this mural right here painted by 
a local artist named Lee Adams. So this was kind of the centerpiece inside the Sears building, inside their uh, uh, dining facility that was there. So this represents a collection of events that happened in Jacksonville, all before St. Augustine. Because the French came here in 1562 and they planted a column and they left and they came back, French Huguenots did, and they had a settlement called Fort Caroline in 1564. Jean Rabot went back to France to get more men and more supplies and then he comes back and this is Jean Rabot coming back in 1565. So all of this took place all before St. Augustine. So now you're thinking, wait a minute, isn't St. Augustine the oldest city? Well, it's the oldest continuous city of European origin. So chapter one in St. Augustine's history is that the French are here in Jacksonville. And that causes the Spanish to come here to defeat the French, establish a permanent military outpost that they called St. Augustine. Okay, uh, Fort Caroline, you can visit it today. Uh, we celebrate our French history um, out in the Arlington area, uh, and it's a, it's a park out there, free park to go to. Any questions before we take the elevator? So two years ago, Jacksonville was 200 years old. Azar Sausage, if anybody can tell me what the birthday of Jacksonville, recognize the birthday is. Well, it's not the birthday It is you. I got here for you. Uh, <laughs> June 15th, uh, birthday. And uh, Isaiah Parks is, is a recognized founder, and the Harp Bridge named after This uh, belt will go down on Liberty Street where the cow fort was. Because that's where Jacksonville, the original 20 blocks, were laid out at the cow fort. Not that Jacksonville was called cow fort, but the city started at the cow fort where they laid out the original 20 blocks. Okay, we'll keep walking. This building was here, it was actually built in the 1920s as the headquarter building for the Greenleaf and Crosby Company, a jewelry store company. And uh, the original design for this building was the square. Six stories on each side. But see, in the 1920s, there were tall buildings all of a sudden being built. The Barnett Building over here went up at 17 stories high. The Lynch Building went up at 18 stories high. The Carling Hotel went up at uh, 13 stories high. They said, we're going to be dwarfed. All these tall buildings, we only got six stories. Someone said, well, we got enough money for six stories. We got enough money for 12 on one side of the building and just one story on the other. But later on, when we get more money, we'll finish it. <laughs> We're still waiting. <laughs> now this is funny, and uh, to be fair, nobody lose these, nobody leave them anywhere. I'm gonna share these with you as we walk. But uh, these are my Greenleaf and Crosby souvenir spoons. Because Greenleaf and Crosby, they got into the tourism business. People started coming down here. They're selling them souvenir spoons with Florida designs on them. So this one is a Jacksonville design. I mean, there are lots of hotels here. This was big tourism back in the day. Now, when you turn the spoon over and you look up here, you will see the original Florida seal. This was the very first Florida seal that was designed. Look closely at it, you see mountains in the seal. <laughs> Everything is wrong in this seal. So some artist drew this, it got passed as the original, as the, you know, the official Florida seal, but obviously the person did it, didn't know anything about Florida. Who did? <laughs> so I'm going to pass it around. You can look as we continue to walk to the other We'll stop right here outside our old Carling Hotel. Built in 1920s. But you see, come the 1950s, this became the ruse of El Hotel. And in 1963, they had a fire here. My spoon maker, am I not sitting spoon? It goes around. They had a fire here. One of our worst fires ever here in Jacksonville. Many people died here. And come 1968, this was just a shell of a building. What are we going to do with this building? 
Later on, it became a retirement center. And more recently, within the last 20 years, this was fixed back up. And it's a good example now of historic preservation in Jacksonville because we saved this building, we repurposed it, fixed it up. They took the 300 hotel rooms and made it into 100 luxury apartments. So spoons are still going around. A couple more blocks to walk. I look over my shoulders over there to that mid-century modern style building. Kind of looks like a honeycomb design on the outside. It looks like it has an air traffic control up at the top, doesn't it? So that was the Universal Marion Building. Uh, it was the headquarters for a company called Charter Oil back then, back in 1968. And up at the top there was the Embers Restaurant that rotated around. That was the Embers up there. And oh, everyone loved going to Paris to the Embers. And it took about an hour to make a complete revolution up there. So by the time you finished your meal, you got to see the entire view all the way around. Does it still go around today? No, it doesn't. Mm. Nobody's fixed it. So uh, it was JEA offices and JEA was using it as a uh, uh, place to meet and stuff like that, but no one's been up there. I'm trying to get up there and get access to it. Because <laughs> you got a 360 degree view up there. It's great. That'd be awesome. Yeah. Okay, we'll keep the building across the street. And when we get over to that corner, you can look up above the columns, still stetched in the steel up there. You can still make out where it said Jacksonville Public Library up there. So after a great fire of 1901, that was our library building. And when we outgrew that building, that's when we built the Hayden Burns Library here. Basically 1965, this one goes up. And I mentioned that we tore down the old City Hall building that was here at the time. And then when they made room for the Hayden Burns Library. So this was the new fancy library in 1968. We can cross here. See the old library building a little bit better. It's always fun trying to figure out the faces that are in the column. And there's a debate over quite a few of the faces, but one debate, uh, there is one face, there's not a debate, and it's the third guy over, the bald guy with the big bushy mustache. Who's that guy? Shakespeare. Shakespeare, yes, that's Shakespeare. Yeah, that's Shakespeare. <laughs> but we outgrew that building and we built the Hayden Burns Library. This is called Mid Century Modern Style Architecture. At one point in time, about 10 years ago, they were talking about tearing this building down. But you know what? 30 years from now, people come from all over to see mid-century modern architecture. So let's save some of our treasures. Uh, the architect for this was a guy named Taylor Hardwick. He also did the original Friendship Mountain that we talked about. He was a very popular architect in the 1960s. On our way back to Bolt City. The world. Uh, just you wait. There it is, guys. Can you see it? Can you see it? Right there. And that's where the door guy would stand. So this is a good example of Jacksonville as a story of preservation here. So uh, instead of tearing down the old 1920s Carling Hotel, we saved it, fixed it up, repurposed it. So they turned the thing. When people came in, he would have stepped down, he would have grabbed their bags and carried them up the stairs to where they would have checked in. Any questions at all? No. no. Okay, continuing on over to Bold City. Much for going on the tour. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Gary. Back at Bold City. <laughs> now we have special guests coming tonight here. Uh oh. And we actually have seven family members from the Tandler family. Because the mayor who's, who's up here, that's Hans Tandler, who was mayor during uh, Jacksonville's consolidation. The boss of bosses. And he's putting up that sign with an actress named Lee Meredith. 
and top to bottom tour. Put them up. I too. 